world is a challenging place right now. Our panel, governments, organisations, communities and our health and well-being are all in crisis. It's obvious to most that, uh, that us that the path we're on is unsustainable. Which means it's time to think more holistically. In other words, to work more purposefully, to buy and consume more intentionally and to lead more consciously. To delve deeper into this, we're joined now by Martin pa uh, Palethorpe, who's a conscious leadership coach at BeUnbounded.com and the co-founder of ConsciousLeaders.Earth. And Gina Hayden, who's also a conscious leadership coach, the author of Becoming a Conscious Leader and the fellow co-founder of ConsciousLeaders.Earth. Uh, Martin, if I can start with you, what is conscious leadership? So the heart of conscious leadership is, uh, is being conscious. So being aware in the moment. So how aware are we in the moment of our thinking, our e the role of our ego, the role of our conditioning that we picked up from childhood, the role of like unconscious habits. So uh, awareness of what's going on for us in the moment and then also what's going on around us and for others. So how aware are we of what others are thinking and feeling? How aware are we of what's going on in our team or our organization in terms of the, the culture, the morale, the dynamics, the actions? And how aware are we also of then the impact that we're having on wider society? And so conscious leadership is about, first of all, awareness. And, and the more aware we are of ourselves and others, then the more effectively and more considered we can be in the leadership that we choose, in the way that we lead our lives, in the way that we lead in our families, in our organisation and also in wider society. And ultimately, the more conscious we become, the more we're focused on contributing to the greater good. OK, so those are the definitions of, a con of, of a conscious leadership. But Gina, let me bat it to you. What are the attributes of a conscious leader? Are the traits obvious? I think the first thing to say is there's no one way. So it's not a box. It's not a, a leadership model that you fit into and, and, and have to copy. Um, it very much comes from you. And uh, picking up on what Martin was saying, it comes from a, a sense of a clear and settled mind and and even heart, meaning that you're not leading from a place of reaction and your own conditioning. You're not getting in your own way and having a, an effect on the world around you and your organization around you that is unhelpful. So the impact tends to be we would recognize it with people who are uh, leaders who are responsible and kind and considered and authentic and grounded and, and, and holistic. They're they're looking at the bigger picture, a bit like Marissa, your previous guest, was talking about from Standard Charter. So um, I think very importantly, it's not about being fluffy or nice. It's not it's not soft leadership. You know, you're still having to make tough choices, tough decisions. You may have to take a very tough stand in your organisation for something you believe in. I'm thinking of a client who, who had to take a stand about plastics in their organisation, even though that wasn't a priority at the top. Um, but the kind of characteristics we see in these leaders and from the research I've done... They tend to be leaders who do things like distribute power in their organization rather than hold it for themselves. And they create spaces where people can contribute because it feels safe to bring your ideas, right? And as a result of that, you start seeing innovation happening from the bottom up across the whole organization. This kind of collective intelligence is busy emerging. Um, and they have a very partnership mindset. So it's about collaboration and how do we partner even with our competitors for a benefit that we can all achieve. We're all in this together. And I think probably the fourth thing that we see is, is leaders who want to use business as a platform for creating good in the world rather than for simply turning a profit. I think we can all uh, see the benefits of kind of conscientious leadership, Martin. But why are conscious leaders so needed right now in organisations in and around the world today? Well, if you look at many of the problems that there are in the world today on so many different levels, um, we see that really it's a result of unconscious leadership decisions and unconscious leadership behaviour. So leadership, by that we mean leadership that is often underpinned by ego by fear or by greed or by self-interest. And when we are leading from that way, we tend to lead by protecting ourselves, satisfying our own needs or the, the, the needs we've got for our organization. We tend to drive people extremely hard. 
we tend to have a myopic focus on results and profit at the expense of other elements. Um, and, and we tend to have a limited attention on people or society or sustainability and so on. So what would happen, we, we think, if, if all people were conscious leaders, what would happen? We'd be operating from a clear, calm mind. We'd be operating from wisdom. And from that, we would have a totally different approach to our health, our mental health and our physical well-being. We would be less striving and struggling at the fast pace that society is moving at at the moment, there'd be more consideration. There would be way less me versus you, less conflict, less competition, more connection, more deep relationships, and a more human-centered approach to uh, enabling people to flourish in our organizations. And of course, um, more decisions that were naturally more ethical and more sustainable. Not like we need a depart department in the organization specifically to look at it, but, but really at the heart of how the organization works. And Gina, in your previous answer, you referenced some research which you did. And I would imagine that coming out of that, you encountered some interesting examples of conscious leaders who are inspiring figures. Mm. Who were they? Who's, who stood out from that research? Can you name names? It, uh, I, I, can, I can name. Uh, yes, I will name some names. Um, I, I mean, they were amazing, I think, in terms of what they were doing. So, for example, there is a, a, a chief exec of, of a Pantheon, which is a chemical company in uh, the US, whose personal purpose is to revolutionise the chemical industry because she gets that we produce chemicals which go into the earth and then we don't know what the effect's going to be. So her smaller company partners with the larger competitors to bring innovation and in that way influence the industry to be more responsible. So she lives her personal purpose through her, the organization um, or there's the entrepreneur that Martin knows who who's the creator of a um, an eco-friendly cleaning products company because you know 60 billion plastic scourers fill fill landfill so so she didn't want to put up with this anymore or I spoke to a tech entrepreneur who was um, Tom Cheese his name who was the uh, founder of Google Glass amazing leader uh, who in his current work is looking at how is what we're creating going to have a net positive impact on humanity in a thousand years time, which is, you know, kind of mind, who thinks in those terms, but it, it, it asks us to think about what do we care about? Um, and most recently in the news, there's been the um, founder of Patagonia, Yvonne Chouinard. So, you know, giving, giving the company away to a trust so that in perpetuity, um, or at least for the next 50 years, according to him, the profits can be channeled into climate change change rather than into um, becoming a public company. So I, I think there are a myriad of examples. There's no prescription. The question for the leaders listening here really is, um, how do you, what are you inspired to do to make a positive impact beyond yourself? And it's really about your fingerprint. It doesn't have to be a thousand years time. It could be something that you do that you truly care about. So what do you care about and how can you enact that through your business and through your leadership. That would be the question about how to bring your own uh, style of leading more consciously into your everyday organization. Some excellent advice and uh, excellent examples, really, for our delegates here at Cybos 2022 to aspire to. Uh, thank you so much uh, to Martin Palethorpe and Gina Hayden, uh, Conscious Leadership Coaches.